Hello everyone. Today's session is about file locking in center stack. So we are going to show two different Windows PC and mo modifying documents from two different locations. So before we start, let me first introduce the uh, setup I have. So I have three different machines. One of the machine at the center is the center stack. So that's the uh, file sync and share solution that I'm hosting myself. As you can see here, I'm setting it up in a local area network and with an IP address. So all the three different machines are in the VMware. So I just double check the IP address for the center stack machine. So that's the, um, the focal point that uh, combined with the Windows clients do uh, the file locking for team collaborations. So today's session, we are going to show how file locking work and then some of the file locking uh, management um, reporting and uh, for administ administrators to manage the file locks. So we are at one of the machines. So now this is a Windows 10 Home 64-bit machine. So let's go ahead and download the uh, Windows client first. So center stack is different from other sync and share solution in that it provides a real drive letter. A lot of the other solutions called themselves drive, you know, one drive, two drive, whatever drive it is, and they don't really have a drive, um, but center stack do have a drive. So um, the, after you download the Windows client, the first thing you do is to log into um, to the to your account and after you log into your account you have your um, drive letter um, it doesn't have to be m drive my cloud drive on the screen it could be other uh, drive letter you can assign to via the group policy so now let's go ahead to another windows machine so this time it's a windows 7 box so we will do the same thing that we will download the um, Windows client. So file locking and drive mapping goes hand in hand. So to have a real drive-based solution is the key to provide a file locking solution because with a real um, drive-based solution, there's a file system driver under the hood and with the file system driver provided, then um, the moment a file is accessed, the file locking mechanism can kick in. So the drive-based um, solution and the file locking are working together. So now on the Windows 7 box, we also the drive also showed up. And then let's go ahead and do locking. There are two different kinds of locking. One is the manual lock, checking checkout, and the other one is automatic lock. So in today's session, I'm gonna go through both. And the manual lock is the one that's easier to understand. You check, file, check out a file and you own the lock until you check the file in. So uh, that's we just checked out the file. So let's go ahead and make some modifications to it. So now let's switch over to another box, which is Windows 10. So now if I double click on the same file in the drive ladder, it says, yeah, the file is locked. So this is why the file locking and drive mapping has to work together because if it's a um, folder synchronization based solution like Dropbox, then the file is already synced to your desktop. How can you provide you know, drive lo um, locking, right? So the file is already on your desktop. So now let's go back and save the current file 
and we are ready to um, to check the file in so we can release the lock. So let's just go ahead and do so. So we can check in and unlock the file. Yep, so it's checked in. So then the context menu changed back to checkout. So that's good. So now, as soon as it's checked in, then I, when I go to the Windows 10 machine, I can start to modify. And then you can see the update from Windows 7 line come in. And then, you know, now I can check out from the Windows 10 side. So this demonstrate the ability to manually lock and unlock a file by just right click the context menu and then just do uh, check out and check in. So that's the first way of doing uh, file locking. There's also a second way, which is the automatic file locking. We also call it distrib distributed locking in center stack. There's pros and cons of the two different way of doing the, um, the locking. So in the manual locking, the benefit is you check it out and you own the lock until you checked in. So, you know, you control the whole duration of the lock. And now there's also distributed file locking, so it's more automatic. So um, lock file, you know, enable it, you can lock exclusively, means nobody else can read. Um, and then there's some other settings. So now the um, we just double checked that the distributed locking uh, is enabled. So now let's just go ahead and we don't need to check out anymore because it's going to be automatic. Just open up Word and then it's going to be uh, locked. So now let's go ahead and verify. So you can always go to the web portal and um, check on the file. So this is the test word. That's the file. Um, and then you switch over to the info view. You can see it's locked by you know, me and then the specific um, machine. And I didn't do checkout, but just by opening up the file in Microsoft Word, and then the uh, the file is locked. So there's pros and cons, as we said before, uh, between the manual lock and distributed lock. So for the distributed lock to work, the machine that's modifying the document has to keep uh, in contact with the center stack server. So let's say if you uh, lost the control, then the lock will be revoked. So you know, maybe every 10 minutes, 15 minutes, the um, you need to, you know, the machine needs to send an heartbeat to the center stack server. So that's the distributed lock. And lock file exclusively means um, nobody else can read. Delay sync until file is unlocked means you just keep on saving to the local copy until you know you do a grand finale, close the file, and then you're done. So you don't save too many versions. So now just by opening it up from a different machine now, right? So from Windows 10. And then you can see if we check the same file. It's locked, right, by, um, uh, so the moment, so that it's more, I would say the distributed log is more convenient, right? So, but you need to know if you just go offline, then um, the log, you know, in, in about 10, 15 minutes will be revoked, right? So um, if you lock it explicitly using checkout, you can hold on to it, you know, for a longer period of time, but, for uh, if you want center stack to lock it for you, um, you have to be kind of active, right? So if you go offline for an extensive uh, period of time, then the lock can be revoked. So there's pros and cons here. 
and the distri distributed log is done by application. So by default, the Microsoft apps are already um, pre-filled. So, but if you have, let's say, Adobe apps and you need to uh, put them in. And there's also a distributed logs uh, report. So you can see who's logging what file. So that's a management side of the functionality. So this is file logging. Thank you.